Okay, so let's talk about a family where we have a normal mom and a normal dad and they have two children and let's say that this child is sick and let's call her Jane. Jane is normal. And Jane gets together with John and John is part of a family where they just happen to have, and this is very unusual, the same genetic disorder in the family. And let's say that this disorder is um, autosomal recessive. So the bad allele would be the small a. And so naturally Jane and John are concerned and they're wondering what about our kids? You know, what are the chances since each of us have a sibling with the same disease? What are the chances that if we get together and we have a child that that child will also be sick with that same disease? And so you might be the genetic counselor and you might be called upon to answer that question. So you have to do a calculation and the calculation will be based on whatever it is you know at the time and do realize that when more information becomes available then that calculation can change dramatically so what do you suppose we should do first so we're gonna figure out the genotypes of the people in the pedigree and of course we want to know about Jane and Joy, uh, John so we're gonna start with the sick ones because there's only one way in which they can be sick and then do you remember what we do with the normal ones? What are we going to give each normal person in this particular pedigree? We're going to give them one dominant, right? And so Jane, John, okay. And then what do we do? So we're going to go back and forth between the generations and the easiest place to start is where? How about we start with the parents of the sick people? So basically you start with the sick people and you say this must have come from one of the parents so the other one must have come from the other parents so we have resolved basically the, the potential grandparents and of course it's also true for these grand, this set of grandparents, right? But really we're wondering about Jane and about John. So we need to figure out, first of all, if we are looking for a sick child, what is the genotype that we are looking for? Small, small, right. So we, we're really looking into the chance that that child is small, small, as opposed to big A dash, right? So we need to work backwards and say, first of all, um, let's say that Jane is this, and let's say that John is this. What would be our chances of having a sick child? Zero. What if Jane is this and John is this? chances for a sick child? Zero. What if Jane is this and John is this? One-fourth. So in other words, the only combination that would give rise possibly to any sick children at all is if John is a carrier and Jane is a carrier. So we need to factor that in because we don't know for sure if John is a carrier or Jane is a car carrier. Because you can say, for instance, this big A might have been passed on to Jane. Then whatever is here could have been passed on as the second allele and there's a 50-50 chance that that is either big or small. That's true in terms of passing on these alleles. There's a 50-50 chance, big A versus small a. But what is the chance that Jane is a carrier? For that, we need to think a little bit more carefully because we have to factor in all pieces of information. 
So to figure out uh, the chances that Jane is a carrier, what we really should do is we should cross the potential grandparents on paper and look at the possibilities for Jane. So here goes um, the cross and you can do a simple Punnett square and you fill it in just like you normally would. So what is the chance, think carefully, that Jane is a carrier? So some of you say a half. But what else do we know about Jane besides that she has these parents? There's another piece of information. She's not sick. So is this really a possibility for Jane? No. Ah, so we have to use everything, all pieces of information we know at the time. So Jane, we know, is normal. So that rules out small, small for Jane. So Jane can be big A, big A, big A, small A, big A, small A. So what are the chances that Jane is a carrier as opposed to normal because she's homozygous normal? two-thirds. So she has a two-thirds chance of being a carrier. We already know she's normal. She has a two-thirds chance that she's normal because she's a carrier. So of course John has exactly the same situation. So if we do the same cross for John and we, we rule out the possibility that he's sick because we know he's not, then he too has a two-thirds chance that he is a carrier. And you already told me that if you have two carriers, you have a one in four chance of getting a sick child. So we have a series of requirements in order to produce a sick child. So we have to have, Jane has to be a carrier. And John has to be a carrier. And these two carriers have to pass on the wrong alleles. So whenever you find yourself saying and, 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 the chance for a sick child is two-thirds for Jane to be a carrier and, meaning times, two-thirds chance for John to be a carrier and, multiplication, one-fourth chance for the child to inherit the wrong alleles from those carrier parents. So um, we end up with, what, 4 out of 36, which is simplified, simplifies to 1 out of 9. So if you were John and Jane, you might say, well, that's an acceptable risk. You know, 1 in 9 chance that we have a sick child, 8 in 9 chance that our child will be normal. Maybe a carrier, but hey. So you might go ahead and have a child. And let's just say that they have a sick child. And now they're back in your office, you're the genetic counselor, and they say, okay, we had a sick child. What are our chances if we have another child that that child will be sick? What do you tell them? Same as before? Or have, have we gotten some additional information. So if they in fact have a sick child, what does that tell us about John and Jane? They're both carriers. So the chance that Jane is a carrier is no longer two-thirds. It is now what? One. A hundred percent, right? And this chance has now changed to one. We now, since they have a sick child, the sick child is evidence that both John and Jane are, in fact, carriers. So we know that those chances have changed. Now, if they're carriers, they still have a one in four chance of passing on the bad alleles. So now our chance becomes one times one times a fourth. So the second time around, we can tell them, well, it's actually a one in four chance. Now, John and Jane haven't changed. What has changed is our information. And we have to act upon all the information we know 
and as information changes, our, the results, the calculation changes as well.